Hey everybody, it's your good old pal Empty Hero. And today, thanks to my own inability to give up on a project despite my Patreons repeatedly voting against it, we're going to discuss a smattering of games developed by Platinum Games. So sit back, drop your pants, and prepare to get Platinum Hard. Bayonetta is the most titillating Japanese game you can install on your computer without having to hide the executable file in a folder full of pictures of kittens, baby Jesus, and little bitty kittens riding baby Jesus. In this, Devil May Cry from the tip of my penis, you play as the eponymous Bayonetta, a gazelle-legged slut with the proportions of a WNBA player, save for a much smaller dick. Seriously. I can't tell if the developers intended players to require a ladder and stilts to sniff Bayonetta's 500 year old grandma pussy that probably resembles a burlap sack full of polywogs, or if this is just how all women look to the game's producer Hideki shorter than his mommy Kamiya, but I'd still spray o the bayo with my mayo. Splat her poon like a semen spittoon and wear her pussy lips like one of those flappy eared winter hats, if you know what I mean. Bayonetta has a cunt so tight she can free fall to oist, feet first without her womb inflating like a syphilitic balloon, masterfully utilizes her gigantic ET sized middle fingers to jumpstart both motorcycles and prostates, has perfect vision but wears glasses anyways in order to keep the cum out of her eyes, save for her brown eye. Proves my grandfather's theory correct about how mixing the light with the dark will eventually destroy the world, and fights in the nude more often than me at one of my children's soccer games once the mess kicks in, against misogynist angels who only attack Hokami due to her perceived privileged status as a gamer girl. In a story so incomprehensibly Japanese that as you suffer through the constant barrage of cringe inducing cutscenes, you'll begin to wonder if you're actually watching Neon Genesis Evangel leaking from my pantheon by mistake. While this beautiful hoe is serviceable as a protagonist, between the Joe Pesci knockoff who only exists to pad out the opening and closing bookends, the over reliance on both amnesia and a fruitless MacGuffin chase to further the plot, continuity breaking time travel out of fucking nowhere that should have rendered the entire game unnecessary rather than enabling it, and an ending cinematic so embarrassing that it should have led directly into the beginning of Final Fantasy X-2, the writing of Bayonetta makes God Hand look like the brothers Karamazov by comparison. Fans of Devil May Cry may expect a similar all out with your balls out action game, but from the first moments of Ninja, totally not guy den, you'll realize you're playing a completely different sort of game. Due to the convoluted unlock system that can lead to players completely missing out on certain weapons, and requires the purchase of expensive items to perform basic maneuvers like counterattacks and blocks, Bayonetta's moveset can feel almost as restrictive as her sweaty ass hair corset set at times. The few weapons Bayonetta has at her disposal can be equipped to either her hands or feet, including some shoe guns that she controls via an elaborate system of pulleys and queefs, and needs to be reloaded less often than your balls while playing. But only two sets of weapons can be accessed at a time, and the occasional weapon Bayonetta steals from an enemy breaks after a couple of swings. Quick time events range from keeping the player on their toes during combat by spawning the most horrific hair monsters since Yoko Ono's bush took up half the cover of the Two Virgins album, to pointless instant death generators that ruin otherwise flawless segments. And while an initial run through of the game on normal may feel button mashy at times, keep in mind that moving from normal to hard without the proper weapon and move unlocks can lead to a deeper dicking than Bayonetta getting fucked silly by Cthulhu in the Mariana Trench. Enemies are incomprehensible clusterfucks lifted directly from the Book of Enoch, save for the gigantic horse penises that the author was obsessed with, and include avocado headed hoes, boats, a metal gear shark thing, some kind of upside down baby face two headed plate glass dragon thing, the ghosts of my misspent sperms, and a bunch of furious Legos. 
For some reason, only sluts who have given their soul to the devil can see these monsters, this struggle between banal angels and anal angels begins off screen when a cross-dressing Virgil knockoff with a duck's ass for hair stabs Bayonetta in the womb almost as hard as I'd like to, and knocks Bayonetta into a 500 year long dream so wet that it caused a swamp ass swamp to form around her. Some idiot stumbles upon our protagonist while following the scent of Bayo's pussy while clam diving and is torn to pieces by some angels who were also there for no particular reason. Luckily, as a baby tortoise nose to clamber towards the sea, Bayonetta awakes, remembering only how to spawn gigantic spiders and centipedes from her bush, and also how to dress like a complete idiot. I can only assume those belts on her arms were part of a failed attempt to stop them from growing after she gave up on trying to slow the growth of her legs and thirst for, insert elaborate jizz pun here. Scuba Steve's son grows up to make a complete ass of himself and is only redeemed by causing Bayonetta's past self to develop the oral fixation that, once her big girl hair comes in, will enable her future self to slurp the wrinkles off a pair of nuts. For no particularly good reason, Bayonetta carries around her inner child like a Clinton smuggling fetuses out of Haiti in their colon. This is, of course, due to the machinations of a David Bowie Pope who wants to awaken some gigantic slut so she can re-roll the universe. During Bayonetta, players travel between hell and paradise faster than a vacationer going off tour in Jamaica. And much like a Democrat, ground control to major douche, leverages his mind control over Thursday's child and the Gene Genie to combine these demographics into a new world order of horrific mulatto abominations. Overall, though the gimmick levels are hit or missile, Bayonetta is a uniquely enjoyable game despite its flaws. And I'm not just saying that because I'd pump her so full of cream she'd have to change her name from Bayonetta to Vianetta and spend hours trying to convince my dry cleaners that I tripped at an aquarium and accidentally filled my pants with horrified hagfish after playing.